Okay, if you, how many of you are here for communion this morning? Communion was awesome. Miles did such a wonderful job. He had this prayer for us, and it starts out, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned, and so on and so forth. And I want to talk to you about those very words today. I want to talk to you about Jesus Christ as, as being Lord. So um, let's go to the Lord. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that you are Jesus Christ, the Lord. And may that always be the center of our lives. May you always be the center of our hearts. And may the reality of who you are and the power that you have be central in our thoughts today and always in your name. Amen. The word Jesus in Greek is pronounced Jesus. In Hebrew, it's Yahshua. We would say Joshua, you know. The, left, the, the, the first is Yahshua. We say Joshua. Have you ever heard a person like who really speaks Spanish, like be speaking like regular English and all of a sudden they say something in Spanish in the middle of that and it's like all of a sudden they, they kick into that Spanish accent in the middle. Well, this is how it is with Jesus' name. We say Jesus because we're inclined towards Greek. But if you were Jewish and you lived during Jesus' time and you were a Jew, speaking Hebrew or Aramaic, you would look at him and you would say Yahshua. We say in English, Joshua, same word. Say The English word is Joshua of Yahshua. But we say Yahshua. That's the name that it was given to Jesus. Just like uh, when you uh, name your son Tom, that's not the only Tom in the world. I'm not the only Eric, believe it or not, in the world. There are other Erics. And in Jesus' time, there were other people named Jesus. It's not unusual. That was a common name. But Some people think Christ still is his last name, Jesus Christ. Like, no, no, that's not his last name. That's who he is. That's who he is. That's like saying Pastor Hansen. It's like saying Dr. Smith. In English, which is the minority language when it comes to modifying nouns, we say, look at, we say, look at the definite article, big modifier, red, Adjective describing, rather, and then house. We say big red house. But in most languages in the world, you don't have the descriptors first. You don't have big and red. You have the noun first. Like, look at the house, which is big and red. The casa rojo grande. In Spanish, that's how they would say that sentence. This is why translators sometimes have a diff difficult, interpreters have a difficult time, because the words come in a, in a, in a jumbled up manner, so when we say Jesus Christ, he actually is Christ Jesus. That's who he is. Historically, we would say Messiah. In Hebrew, we say Mashiach. Well, what does that word mean? It means the anointed one. So we know that Jesus is Yahshua, and we know that Christ is the anointed one. So in Greek, when we say Christ, if I'm a Greek, I say the word Christ. If I'm a Hebrew, I say Messiah. They mean the same thing like casa and house, like rojo and red, like grande and large. They mean the same thing. They're just different languages. So in Hebrew, when you see the word Messiah, it's as though if you were Greek, you would say the Christ. Well, what does that mean? It means the anointed one. Not just anointed, but Definite article, the, the anointed. Now, I'm a bit down in the weeds, but let me give you a little bit of a history lesson and some contextualization as to who was anointed in those days. Prophets, priests, and kings. And when I mean anointed, I mean oil, a horn of oil would be poured on them. They would be anointed with that oil. Elisha was anointed, he was anointed as a prophet in the Old Testament. Aaron was anointed as a priest in the Old Testament. David was anointed king in the Old Testament. But Jesus, when he comes, who is the anointed one, he also was anointed. And what was he anointed? He, well, he said of himself in Luke chapter four, verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He, see, he says of himself, I am anointed of God. 
to preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, and to release the oppressed. Now, three texts, we in theological circles call them proof texts for us to understand that Jesus was, Jesus was his name. He was what? He was the Christ, the Christo, he was ha Mashiach in Hebrew. He was the anointed one. He said of himself, I am anointed. But what was he anointed as? Here they are. Prophet in Luke chapter 4, 24, Jesus, I tell you the truth, he continued. No prophet is accepted in his own hometown. Who was he speaking about? He's speaking about himself. So he identifies himself as a prophet right there. Secondly, he identifies himself as priest in Hebrews 9, 12. Jesus did not enter by means of the blood of the goats and calves, but he entered in the most holy place once for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. Who did that? Jesus. Jesus went into the Holy of Holies. Who was the only person allowed to go into the Holy of Holies? Say the high priest. The high priest. So it, first of all, he identifies himself as a prophet. Now he identifies himself as the high priest. He's anointed. He's not just Jesus, because there's Jesus is everywhere. He's Jesus, he's Jesus the Christ, the, the, the anointed one. And thirdly, you know, he, he said of himself in John 18, 36, he said of himself, my kingdom, wait a second, if he has a kingdom, what is he? He says, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest but the, uh, by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. Jesus is his name. Christ is who he is, he's prophet, he's priest, he's king, he's the anointed one. But what does he do? I may be Pastor Hansen, he may be Dr. Smith, but what does Dr. Smith do? Well, he's a doctor of this, that, and the other thing. So I have his name, I have his title, but what does he do? Well, this is where we come up with the word Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. There it is in Greek. And it means this, the owner or master exercising full rights and supreme authority. Then get, I mean, that's a, that's a long business card right there, right? Like, who are you? Well, my name is Jesus. I am the Christ and this is what I do. I'm in charge of everything. What do you mean everything? Yes, everything. I, I have, I am the owner of everything, I am the master who exercises full rights and supreme authority over everything. That's what I do, that's my job description. I'm Lord. Jesus, the Christ, who is Lord. In fact, in the Old Testament, when you read the word Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's just not the translator saying, oh, that's really, you know how you write in a letter and you write it all caps because you want it to be loud? That's not what they mean there. When you see capital L-O-R-D, what you see there in the original Hebrew is the very name of God. Y-H-V-H is the English transliteration for the Hebrew four tetragrammaton, four letters, yod He vav He. There's four letters for the name of God in the Old Testament. That's what Lord is. Now, if that is true, and I submit to you that it is, it is either, it's either arrogance or supreme lunacy to attempt to mock him if that's who he is. Galatians 6, 7 says, uh, don't be deceived. It doesn't say God won't be mocked. Some of you have mocked him in your past. Uh, but you're not gonna get away with it. It's not gonna happen, not on his watch. Remember a couple weeks ago I talked to you about non-negotiable truths? You can believe anything you want. You can actually believe anything you want. You can believe that there's not gravity you can believe that if you want. You're free to believe anything you want. But here's the, here's the catch. You're not free to choose the consequence of your choice. I was thinking more about that sermon recently, and, and uh, I came up with this little short conversation between an unbeliever and a believer. And the unbeliever says, well, you know, I'm not going to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. But the Bible is clear that Christ is Lord whether you accept him or not. Christ is Lord, whether you accept him or not. Jesus is his name. Christ is his title. He is the 
prophet, he's the priest, he's the king, and he's the Lord. It's what he does. What does he do? He is the owner, the master of everything, exercising full rights and supreme authority over everyone and everything. That's pretty all-inclusive. Everyone and everything means everyone and everything. That means not just the things that you automatically think about. That means he is Lord over sin. He is Lord over Satan. He is Lord over disease. He is Lord over death. And he is Lord over life. He's everywhere, all the time, seeing everything, even balloons <laughs> flying over our country. He's everywhere, all the time, seeing everything, all-knowing, all-powerful. So, this means that I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to go to a science class here in just a second. That means he has created everything, that is. And not only did he create it, he created it for himself. And not only did he create it, he created it for himself. He is the very element that holds everything together. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, it says, There is one God, the Father from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but, oh, here it is. Here's that phrase. There is only one Lord who is the Lord, comma, Jesus the Christ. There's only one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. In other words, how it's all had, held together. Now, this has intrigued me for decades but I recently ran across the, 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 the doctor, the gentleman who is the father of modern quantum physics, Dr. Max Planck, P-L-A-N-C-K. When he received the Nobel Prize for physics, so I'm not talking about your friend Joe at work, I'm talking about a PhD Nobel Prize winner in physics who discovered quantum theory and quantum physics. This is what he said on the day that he received his Nobel Prize in physics. As a man who has devoted his whole life, the most clear-headed science, the study of matter, I can tell you as a result of all of my research about atoms, there is no matter as such. That's arresting right there, isn't it? Here's a guy who studies matter and he says, ah, oh, there's no matter. And he's, he's not saying it doesn't matter. He's just saying what you think is matter is not matter. Let's drill down. Let's drill down uh, using physics and, and continue his quote. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particles of an atom to vibration and holds this miniature solar system of the atom together before our eyes. If we take a, a, a high-powered microscope and we look close, 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 closer, plexiglass pulpit, drill down, look close at that. We don't see plexiglass. What do you see on, in an atomic microscope? You see atoms. And what about protons and neutrons? What, 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 what do we know about them? They're constantly spinning around the nucleus, right? Hello, science class, hello. <laughs> so they're spinning, they're moving. They're spinning, they're moving. Get ready. This is not matter. What you have is a force that brings atoms together and holds them in a pattern that makes you perceive there is matter. But this thing is actually moving right now. It's, it's, it's humming, it's, 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 it's actually spinning. Protons and neutrons spinning together, but it's being held together. The chair you're sitting in is moving. That curtain is moving, that speaker is moving. The, the rocks could actually cry out. It's alive, it's moving. Atoms are spinning around. 
all matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force, which brings the particles of an atom to vibration and holds this miniature solar system together before our eyes. And we must, as scientists, all assume that behind this force is the existence of a conscious and an intelligent mind. This is the, mod the modern day father of, of, of quantum physics. He says, this mind is the matrix of all matter. The divine intelligence that is behind everything that is working in this body of intelligence behind life, all that which is intelligence must be innate in every creation of that intelligence. He's saying there is something, I, he, he uses force. There is something holding everything together. What is that? Jesus, who is the Christ, who is Lord. He's the boss of everything. You know, uh, uh, Superman, right? Superman, he has one chink in his armor. What is it? Kryptonite, what does that do? All the power, all the batteries go dead when kryptonite comes around, right? Guess what? You can write it down, tweet it, tattoo it. Jesus has no kryptonite. Jesus holds everything together. He is the ultimate power source. He is the force that holds matter together. The supremacy of Jesus is without exception. Without, there are no exceptions. He is Lord of A-L-L. -L. Lord of, oh, that means everything. Everything, he's Lord of it. Colossians 1. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. If you can't see it, he still made it. Stop for a second. Full stop. If you can't even see it, he still made it. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers, rulers, authority, all things were created by him and for him. And if you don't believe that, your lack of unbelief is disturbing. <laughs> well, you can, you can choose not to believe it, but that doesn't mean it's true. You ask someone, how did, how did you get saved? Well, God saved me. God saved me from sin. God saved me from sin. No, God did not save you from sin. God saved you from himself. He saved you from the punishment of your own rebellion. Because the sin that ultimately sends you to hell is the rejection of Jesus who is the Christ, who is the Lord. When a person gets saved, they get saved from God. Yeah, 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 hold on. They get saved by God. They get saved for God. They get saved in all those ways, but you get saved from God. What do I mean? I mean, the justice of God, the divine justice of God is coming for you. For anybody who doesn't say Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, Jesus, mm -hmm. the, Yeshua, oh yeah. Christ, the anointed, how about what does he do? He's the master and ruler of everything. And if you don't believe that, you could, you're, you're free to believe whatever you want, but you'll suffer the consequences of your choices. His divine I know it's not popular, and I know I'm not gonna get a whole bunch of hallelujah, pastor, the wrath of God is coming after me. But that is the truth that you must have. He has saved you, yes, by himself and for himself, but he saved you from him. So who is hell for? Hell is for those who have rejected. It was created for the demons who rejected Christ. 
That's who it was created for, Satan and the demons. That's who it was created for. But he has given us the opportunity to say, Jesus Christ is Lord. And when you say, Jesus Christ is Lord, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, then you're saved. Saved from what? My sin? Well, okay, 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 I'll buy into your sin. Yes, you're saved from your sin. But what is the byproduct of sin? The wrath of God. Oh, I messed up. No, no, no. You, as Miles said this morning in communion, you missed the mark. Your arrow, your arrow didn't even hit the target. It pfft, fell short. It didn't even get there. That's what sin is, missing the mark. And as a result of that, there is the wrath of God. When the wrath of God is after all of us. No, man, that's stark. But that's how great the good news is. He says, I've made a way. I've made a way. It's so easy. I'm gonna actually send my son to stand in as prophet, priest, and king. And he is he's gonna show you. And he's gonna rule over everything. And if, 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 and if, and if you believe that God is Lord, then you know that God's timing is perfect and you would wait a lot differently if you believed that God's timing was perfect. You, we would act a lot differently if we really believe what we say we believe. He is Lord. That means he's in charge of everything. He's in charge of your finances. He's in charge of your health. He's in charge of your car. Well, I got a brand new car. No, God gave you a car. What are you gonna do with it? I got a brand new house. No, God gave you a house. What are you gonna do with it? Well, I got this life. I woke up this morning. God gave you breath to breathe this morning, sir. What are you going to do with that? He is the Lord. He is the Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the ruler of everything. Everything. He is the boss. Gosh, you know what that does for me? It makes me happy because he has all the answers. The boss has all the answers. Golly, gee, what are we going to do? I don't know. Shoot the balloon down. Don't shoot the balloon down. How about we just pray and say, God, intervene. You do what you need to do to get the situation taken care of. Because right now, whether you believe it or not, I personally believe we're at war with China. We're at war with China, in, in my opinion. We're at war with China. And, and until we get on a, uh, this is a little bit political, a little bit, but until we get on a war footing, we're, we're just gonna be, we're gonna be, we're gonna be uh, the punching bag of China will be the laughing stock. Um, and, 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 I'm, and I'm not saying go blow anybody up. I'm not saying kill people. I'm just saying, listen, know who you are. And listen, if my people... If my people who get a bazooka go out and start shooting, that's not what it says. No, 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 no. How about, how about you humble yourself, you seek his face, you pray, you confess your sin. Then God comes in a revival and heals the land. Not through whoever it is you vote for. I think who you vote for is important. I think, I think that would be, it would be dismissive of what God has instituted in our land not to be involved in that process. But, but if, 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 that's all, if your trust, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, some trust in the Democrat party, some, I'm way afar afield, but you need to know this. You cannot put your trust in a, in a party. You can't even put your trust in a person. Well, I like Tulsi Gabbard. Well, I like Donald Trump. Well, I like Barack Obama. Well, I like Joe Biden. Yeah, good for you. Great. Whatever. That's fine. I, I know who I like and I know who I'll vote for. And if you'd like help, I can certainly give you some of my opinion later. <laughs> what, 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 what I think, you know. But, but you've got you to trust the Lord for your home. You've got to trust the Lord for your health. Yes, go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. God gave doctors wisdom and medicine. But above all, the Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit is there. How do I know that? Because Jesus Christ is Lord. He holds it all together. He is, he's holding your life together right now. Well, you get to the end of the rope, just tie a knot and hang on. How about you hang on from the beginning to Jesus? No slipping down the rope. You just hang on to Jesus. I am without him, without Jesus Christ as Lord, you're broken. The people in the cubicle next to you at work, the people who live next door to you that don't have Jesus Christ as Lord, they may hang out with Jesus at Christmas and Easter. They may go to his house occasionally for a dinner, right? And oh yeah, he's, 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 He's a king and he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a prophet, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, how about Lord? Lord means the supreme authority over everyone and everything. And God will not be mocked, ladies and gentlemen. 
Jesus Christ is Lord. Thomas figured it out. After the resurrection, Jesus came back. Jesus put his, said, Thomas, here, go ahead, put your hands, put your fingers right there in, in, in my hands and feel my side. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. In other words, he says, my supreme authority and all powerful one, you are theos, you are God. Wow, that's the confession of doubting Thomas. You are the Lord. You are the supreme one. You ever been to a beauty pageant? I've been to several. And whether it's Miss, I don't know if there's a Miss Springfield. Is there a Miss Springfield? I don't think so. Well, county fairs are big around here, but in some t- Miss Decatur, Miss Champagne, Miss Athens, Miss Pekin, whatever. And then they, they get this, you know, the crown and the, and the roses and the sash and everything. And then they go on to like the next thing, you know, and then they go to Miss Illinois. Miss Illinois, and then, then when you become Miss Illinois, they take off Miss Champagne Urbana sash, and they put on what? Miss Illinois. You're the you're 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 the top dog. Uh, maybe that's not the best. Right? You're the you're the one, right? And so they say now you're 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 Miss Illinois, but then then stop with Miss Illinois. What happens? Then you go Miss America. But hey, 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 they take off Miss Illinois and you win Miss America, cha-ching, you got Miss America. Another crown, da 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 Then, we're not done. We gotta go Miss Universe. Like, you know, Mars and Pluto and Uranus are involved. <laughs> but, you know, here we go. <laughs> I think it's just Donald Trump owns, doesn't he own like the Miss Universe? It's, just, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be huge. It's the biggest ever. It's the universe. <laughs> Right, so it's a misunder. So now you've gone from you've gone from your hometown, you've gone to Illinois, you've gone to the United States, and now you're representing, and now what happens is you win Miss Universe. What do they do? Take off the Miss Universe sash and they put, or the Miss America sash, put on Miss Universe, give you another crown. They didn't take away your other crowns, they just gave you another crown. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon the throne. Anybody? I know that's old school stuff right there, man. Oh, he's coming again. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know what that means? That sash that he's wearing, I'm in charge. It says, okay, you got a Lord, you got a landlord, you got a Lord over the governor of your country. You know, we kind of upped our game when America was formed. You know, we don't call them lords like they do in old Europe, but that's what governors are. They're lords. Just, they have a different name. We can call them governors here, but in Europe, they're lords, right? So, so watch this. Jesus says, just in case you have some other lord that you answer to, that you bow your knee to, I am the lord of lords. And... We don't have kings here, we have presidents here, but it's, the nomenclature is, is lateral. It moves across the, the, the spectrum to you know, a king of England, to the president of whatever. Those are, those are lateral terms. So we don't have kings here, but we have presidents here. And I don't know who you put your hope in, but just in case you have another king in your life, I'm the king of kings. It's written on my thigh. It's written on my chest. I'm not a baby in a manger anymore. I'm not a broken man on a cross. I'm coming again to judge because the judgment of God is coming. The judgment of God is coming. I'm coming again. And what I will do is I will judge both the living and the dead. So you don't even get out of it if you died before he comes back. Raise them, I will judge them. Well, who's talking to the dead dust particles in the grave? The one who held them together for 78 years, for 97 years, however old. And there, in their resurrected body, Christ will judge the living and the dead. Officially, mind blown. But that's who he is, Jesus. His title is the Christ, but what does he do? He's Lord, he is Lord. He is Lord, he is Lord. He has what? Conquered 
He's conquered death. That's why he's Lord. Nothing can hold him. He is the very essence of life. Well, I don't like that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Just understand, you can believe anything you want, but there is no appellate court. When you stand before the judge of the living and the dead, and he gives you a decree as to your eternal disposition, you don't get it. Well, I don't like that. <laughs> My baby said I have to go to hell. <laughs> you can cry and you will. And you can wail and you can moan and you will. Because you had a different Lord and you have a different king. I'm asking you to reevaluate your life this morning and say, who is the king in your life? And whoever that is, know this, he is the king of kings, so you better get your priorities straight. Who is the Lord? Who's the supreme authority in your life? Well, you know, uh, uh, I am. Oh, really? You, really? That's where you're gonna go with that. Good luck with that one. When you stand in his presence and he says, who is Lord? And you go, me, me, I'm in charge of me. That's what Tony Robbins said. That's what all the self-help books, I, I, I read a book last night, I read an entire book last night, and a, a lot of it was just garbly gook. It was just, it was just like, you can do it. You can be the best. You can be anything you wanna be. No mention of God. No mention of God. And we, we as the church could buy into that, a godless self-supremacy that you, somehow you think you're the boss. <laughs> Wake up, you are not the boss. Right? If you're a parent, and your little seven-year-old decides they're gonna be the boss, how do you deal with that? Hey, hey, you are not the boss. I am the boss. I brought you into this world. I created you. Thank you? Yes? How do you think God looks at you and me when we stomp our feet? And I'm gonna be anything I want. I'm gonna pack up my bags and I'm just gonna go. And I, Really, that's not gonna work well. It's not gonna end well for you. Oh, you can make your way for a while. You may even get to the very top of the ladder, but you're gonna find out it's leaned against the wrong building. I, I, I just want you to be ready to meet him. I just want you to be ready to meet him. Because that's my job, my job. This is what I do. Are you ready? Are you ready? I know my mom's ready. My mom was in ICU a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Sunday, two weeks ago, she was in ICU crazy. I didn't see her cry. I didn't see her worry. And then there's smile. I'm fine. It's all good. Why? Because she knows who God is. She knows who Jesus is in her life. She knows who the Lord of her life is. Right? That's how it works. That's how it works. Jesus Christ will judge the living and the dead. So I have one final verse for you this morning. I'd like you to stand as I read it. And I, I don't know, do we have 1 Timothy 6, 14? We do? Okay. I'd like you to follow along with me. Just, just, just take a look at this. The word of the Lord says, keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of who? Our Lord, our Lord, who is Jesus the Christ. All right? So keep this command. Don't lose it. Keep it without spot. Don't pervert it. Don't, without spot, until the appearing, because he's coming back, he's coming back, to judge the living and the dead. So until, until the Lord comes back, Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and the only capital R ruler, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor, be honor. How about this? Be polite, be kind, be patient. To him be honor and might forever. His name is Jesus. Who is he? He's the prophet, he's the priest, he's the king, and he is Lord what he does.
Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeshua Hamashiach. Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeshua Hamashiach Hu Adonai. If he walked into this room right now, and he's here, what in your life would you say, gosh, I'm really embarrassed that's there, that attitude? That thing I do when I don't think anyone else is watching. Those thoughts that I have that no one else can hear, he hears them. He knows you. And he's not angry at you. He actually loves you. He loved you so much that he died on the cross to make a way to escape the wrath of God. So I'm going to invite the prayer team to come down front right now. And if you need prayer, I want you to come down too. Just step out. That person next to you will move. But if you're saying, I need somebody to stand in the gap with me, to pray with me, to stand with me, to lift me up in prayer, just step on out. Come on down front. These people have lanyards on. They're ready to pray with you. Just step on out. Maybe you turn and ask your neighbor, hey, can I go down with you and pray with you? Because here's the main thing. No matter what you drive or where you live or how much money you have, at the end of the game, you'll have to determine whether or not Jesus Christ is Lord. In fact, at the very end, every knee will bow. Look up here. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So do it here. Do it now. Why not? Well, I'll do it later. I'd be a little embarrassed if I came down front now. You know, people watch. Jesus hung naked on a cross, bleeding in front of the entire world. Come on. You can do it. Don't be afraid. This is a place of love. There's no condemnation here. We're walking in peace. We're walking in forgiveness. We're walking in joy. That's this house. So no matter, you know, listen, it's so easy to get distracted with the news and your job and all that stuff. That Every once in a while, we just need this moment right here, right now, where we say, yeah, Jesus Christ is Lord. Close your eyes with me. Those watching by television, those online, listening to the podcast. Quiet your heart. And I want you to say these words, Jesus Christ is Lord, in just a moment. And maybe it's the first time you've ever said it. But let this be, let this be a reigniting of the understanding that he's the boss, he's in charge in your life. He's in charge of your home. He's in charge of your family. He's in charge of everything. He is the Lord who holds all together. So together we're going to say Jesus Christ is Lord. Are we we ready? Let's do this. One, two, three. Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's say it again. One, two, three. Jesus Christ is Lord. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ, the Lord and maker of all things, who through him and by him all things were created, now may his hand rest upon your life. May his hand of grace and mercy protect you as you walk through the rest of this day, as you deal with your husband or your wife or your kids or your boss or all of that. God, give us a supernatural peace and lead us, help us. You're in charge of everything. May we just fall in behind you, Lord, as you lead us. You are the Christ, the Lord. So now send us, send us out into this world, a harsh place, a dark place, a hostile place, 
but one where we have no fear. For thou art with me. Your rod, your staff comfort me, and you even prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy. My cup runs over because you are in my life. And now may the peace of heaven and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.